Hello, ladies, gents, and everyones. It is exoplanet time. So there are over 5,500 known exoplanets, which is crazy because when I was born, there was zero. Zero. And the year I graduated high school, there was like 200 known total. By the time I finished my PhD, over 5,000. And now we're at 5,500. It's crazy. We talked before about how that population of exoplanets can be broken down into different subpopulations. But what about the weirdos, the outliers, the populations of one, the exoplanet extremes. That's what we're going to talk about today. The smallest exoplanet. So there's actually two different ways you can think about this, the smallest by mass or the smallest by volume, aka by radius. And since for most known exoplanets we know either the mass or the radius, we're just going to go ahead and give out two of these tiny little crowns. The smallest exoplanet by radius is Kepler 37b, which has a radius that's just 0.31 of Earth's radius. That's a little bit larger than our moon. Kepler 37b was discovered back in 2013 around the star Kepler 37, which is a G-type star, kind of like the sun, although a little bit smaller. Kepler 37b is the innermost of at least three planets in that system, and it orbits pretty close to its star with a period of just over 13 days, which is one of the reasons that we were able to detect it, even though it's so small. Now, the smallest planet by mass is Draugr, aka this pulsar planet, which has actually made an appearance in previous videos in this series. Because Droger is in orbit around a pulsar, we were able to detect it with this method called timing, which is really sensitive, so we were able to find such a small planet that has about 2% of the mass of the Earth, so it's just about twice as massive as our moon. And fun fact, although Droger was discovered a little bit later in 1994, it is part of the same system that contains the first ever exoplanets that were detected back in 1992. Now, we don't know the radius of Droger or the mass of Kepler 37b, but it's plausible that they're basically the same size as one another. And given the difficulty in detecting tiny planets, this is a sign that they're actually probably quite common. So that's the smallest. Now, what about the biggest? Well, that's actually kind of hard to define because it really just depends on where you draw the line between what's a planet and what's a brown dwarf, which we talked about in one of the earlier videos in this series. But basically, that's usually around 13 Jupiter masses. But since there's a lot of objects that are around 13 Jupiter masses with pretty big uncertainties, it's really hard to give out a trophy in this category. So pretty much any 13 Jupiter mass planet kind of could be considered one of the largest planets. Now, since we usually know either the mass or the radius, it can be pretty difficult to come by density information about exoplanets. And the densest exoplanet we found so far was just last year, TOI 463b. Now, this is a planet that's about 13 times the mass of Jupiter, but about the same size as Jupiter. So yeah, it's very dense. Its bulk density is around 14 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, for comparison, Earth, which is actually the most dense planet in the solar system, is 5.5 grams per centimeter cubed. But TOI 463b does have that kind of mass that strata that zone between what's a planet and what's a brown dwarf. So if we want to look more firmly in the planetary only regime, the densest exoplanet is K238b. K238b is a super Earth that's about one and a half times the radius of Earth, but over seven times as massive as Earth. And this puts its bulk density at around 11 grams per centimeter cubed, which means it's actually more like a super Mercury than a super Earth. On the other side of the spectrum, we know of exoplanets with densities so low that it literally boggles the mind. In this case, we're going to give the title not to a single exoplanet, planet, but to a system of three exoplanets that all have very similar, extremely low densities, Kepler 51. These planets are known as super puffs, such a cute name, because their radii are so puffed up compared to their masses. They all have a bulk density that's around 0 0.03 grams per centimeter cubed. Yes, you heard that right. That's hundreds of times less dense than the Earth. They are, in fact, roughly the same density as cotton candy. When it comes to the hottest exoplanets, there are really two main factors. One is how close is that planet to its star? And two is how hot is that star? So it's really no surprise that our award for the hottest exoplanet goes to a planet that's orbiting one of the hottest known exoplanet hosts at over 10,000 Kelvin, which is almost twice the surface temperature of our sun. That star is Kelt 9 and the exoplanet is Kelt 9b, which orbits its star at just 3.5% of the distance between the Earth and the sun. That's that's an orbital period of about a day and a half. This isn't just a hot Jupiter, it's an ultra hot Jupiter. Yeah, it's a real name. Astronomers like to name things like that. The dayside temperature of Kelt 9b, now it's tidally locked to its star, so the same side of the planet is always facing that super hot star. And that side of the planet is over 4,500 Kelvin. That's hotter than all M-dwarf stars and most K-dwarf stars. At these kind of temperatures, molecules can't really survive, so there's things like ionized iron atoms just flying around in this atmosphere. Now, Kelt-9b's one and a half day period is pretty short, but there are shorter, in fact, a lot shorter. The shortest period and also smallest semi-major axis of any exoplanet is this pulsar planet, 
which orbits its pulsar at just 0 0.004 AU. That's a few hundred thousand miles in just about 2.2 hours. That's an absolutely insanely short orbit. But this record does come with one important caveat. This pulsar planet is really weird. Like its mass is only about 1.2 times that of Jupiter. So it's definitely well within what we would consider a planetary mass. But its minimum density estimated from that insane orbit is something like 10 times more dense than Jupiter. So basically scientists think that this planet might actually be an ultra low mass carbon white dwarf. Does that even count as an exoplanet? Okay, so if that one's a little bit iffy, what's the next shortest exoplanet period? Well, then it's K2-137b, which is a much less exotic system that is just an M-dwarf star host. K2-137b orbits in just 4.3 hours, which is still insanely short. Six k 2137 b years is like just over a day on Earth. It orbits at 0 0.006 AU and it's about 0.9 times the radius of the Earth. But in order to not be pulled apart at such a very close in orbit, it actually has to have a lot more iron in it than the Earth has, although maybe less than Mercury, so maybe somewhere in between. Well, we've gone as close as possible to a star, but what about the other direction? How far away can a planet get from a star? Here in the solar system, that's Neptune at 30 AU. So it's nuts to think about a planet being 7,500 AU away from its host star, but that is the case for Coconuts 2b. See what I did there? This planet is about six times the mass of Jupiter, and it was originally thought to be just a free-floating object until they realized that it was actually in this very wide orbit with the Amdor star of Coconuts 2. In fact, this planet is so far away from its host star that it probably didn't originate like in the protoplanetary disk of Coconuts 2. It probably formed on its own as a very, very low mass companion to Coconuts 2. And this is the case with a lot of the most widely separated planetary mass orbits. There's a lot of ambiguity about which ones are planets and which ones are brown dwarfs and how they formed. So if you want to go to the largest orbit that definitely formed within a protoplanetary disk, then you're looking at 130 AU away from the young star HD 97048. And we know that this definitely formed within a protoplanetary disk because that's how we detected it, via its interactions with the gas and dust of the protoplanetary disk around the star. And this young planet is just a few times the mass of Jupiter. Now these very massive massive wide orbit objects are usually detected because they are bright in and of themselves, which means that they are hot. So these are not going to be the coldest exoplanets despite being so far away from their star. Instead, that title goes at the moment to this Ogle planet. This is a planet that's around six-ish times the mass of the Earth that orbits an Emperor star at around three-ish AU. And there's a lot of ish in there because this planet was detected via microlensing, so we don't get as precise measurements of some of these things. And although three AU isn't really that far away, it's around where the asteroid belt is in the solar system, this is around an M-dwarf, which just isn't very bright and hot. So this planet actually only receives about a thousand times less radiation than Earth receives from the Sun. So it means that its surface temperature is around 50K or around that of Neptune's-ish. Pack a coat there. <laughs> now a lot of these planets that we've talked about are odd, but they're not necessarily eccentric because eccentricity is actually a technical term for planets and it refers to how non-circular a planet's orbit is. An eccentricity of zero is perfectly circular, while an eccentricity of one or greater means that the orbit isn't even bound to the star. So we're looking in this range between zero and point nine 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 not repeating much. <laughs> in the solar system, most of the planets have pretty close to zero eccentricity, the outlier being Mercury, and even then its eccentricity is only around 0.2. So the most eccentric exoplanet having an eccentricity of 0.95 is just insane. This honor goes to the exoplanet HD 20782b, which is a gas giant a little bit bigger than Jupiter that orbits a G-type star. Its orbit has a semi-major axis of just over 1.3 AU, but because of the high eccentricity, it gets as close to its star as 0.07 AU at periastron and as far as 2.6 AU at apastron. That's like going from the asteroid belt to within 15 solar radii of the sun every 1.6 years as it orbits. These exoplanet extremes are extreme exoplanets. They're weirdos. And these are just from the exoplanets that we know about, which is less than 6,000 of probably billions of exoplanets in our galaxy. It's a wild, wild universe out there, and I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna go no outro this time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell all your cool nerdy friends. I don't know, I hate doing this, but please do. I do. It really means a lot to me. I'm so grateful that you're here and I hope to see you again next time. Have a good one. Bye.